I'd like to welcome everybody to the Mass this morning at St. Anne's Church here in Flin Flon. It's a lovely, sunny day. It sort of feels like spring, so yay for us. Um, the opening hymn is going to be uh, 482 in the Catholic Book of Worship to Lord Who Throughout These 40 Days. Lord, who throughout these forty days with us did fast and pray, teach us to overcome our sins and close by you to stay, as you with Satan did contend and did the victory win. Oh, give us strength in you to fight, in you to conquer sin. As you did hunger and did thirst, so teach us, gracious Lord, to be yourself and so to live by your most holy word. And through these days of penitence and through your passion tide, forevermore in life and death, O Lord, with us In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of God's Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. You all get a passing grade. You remember to set your clocks properly. <laughs> and you just wait now. Around 11 o'clock, we'll see the other people start floating here. <laughs> and we can laugh. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> Once again, we find ourselves on this beautiful third Sunday of Lent, and one of the overwhelming things you're going to hear today in all of the readings, and this is something that even I have a hard time getting my mind around, we're loved in our sin. We're loved even in our sin. And that's a kind of love that we pray to imitate, and we have a hard time doing but it is the love that God shows us. So as we open our prayer this morning, let us be very mindful that even in this season of Lent, that we, as God's children, are having our hearts renewed and softened by God's love. So let us take a moment now to turn ourselves back towards God's mercy as we pray. Lord, we have sinned against you and against one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of sin and division in our lives. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of God our Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May God forgive us in our sin and raise us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and charity have shown us a remedy for sin. Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness 
that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. And we're now seated as we listen to God's word. In the wilderness, a reading from the book of Exodus. <clears throat> In the wilderness, the people thirsted for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders. He called the place of Massa and Meribah because the children of Israel quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is this the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. today you would listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not harden your hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to the of the Lord. Do not harden your hearts. Oh, come, let us sing, sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. Oh, that today you would listen to the voice of the and bow down. Let us bow before the Lord, our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, and the sheep of His hand. Oh, that today you would listen of the Lord. Do not harden your hearts. Oh, that 
that today you would listen to his voice. Do not harden your hearts as at Meribah, as on the day at Massa in the wilderness, when your ancestors tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my work. Oh, that today you would listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not harden your hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to his grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For a while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though perhaps a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us. Is that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. Lord, you are truly the Savior of the world. Give me living water that I may never be thirsty. Praise to you, Lord, King, King of eternal glory. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his children and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But the one who drinks of the water that I will give will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become a spring of water, gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, 
so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman then said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Now, many Samaritans from that city believed in Jesus. So when they came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed for two days. Many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard it for ourselves. And we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> As I mentioned at the start of Mass this morning, something that you'll pull, or can pull, if you're willing, out of all the readings today, is that fundamental truth that we find most difficult to accept. We're loved in our sinfulness. We're loved in our mistakes. We're loved in our poverty, our weakness. We're loved even when we're disappointing. That's a kind of love and a depth of love that it's kind of easy to speak about here, but out in the world, that kind of love is very difficult. It's a fundamental challenge. And yet every year in this season of Lent, we're asked as Christians to put our stock in that love. We're asked to remind ourselves about what the nature of that kind of love can do for us. That first reading from the book of Exodus today is that age-old story that we pick up always during this time of year. The Israelites have already been led from slavery out of the land of Egypt. And do you remember God's promise to them? You will be my people. I will be your God. I'm going to lead you out of slavery, and you're going to be given a beautiful land with which to flourish. Well, they put their stock in that. But the delivery of the fulfillment of that promise wasn't happening as fast or as quickly as they wanted it to. And that's where this first reading comes in today. The Israelites are once again dissatisfied with God. They, they accuse God of breaking the covenant that he made with them. And they're, they're grumpy. Well, they're tired. They're hungry. They're miserable. And they groan outwardly and inwardly to anyone who will listen. And they've grown angry with God. A righteous kind of anger. And they turn against Moses, who has led them this far. And what is God's response to that? What is God's response to their bitching and complaining? God says to Moses, do what I tell you. And even in the midst of their anger to God, God provides for them. He loves them 
even in their disappointment, in their anger, in their, in their, and they're just, they're plain, they almost give up believing that God can do anything more for them. And God proves them wrong with compassion, with love. And then in the gospel, the very same thing happens, but in a slightly different way. This woman from Samaria, now I read you the short version today, okay? I hope you appreciate that. Short version, because we're all an hour deficit of sleep here. So I gave you the short version. If you can, I encourage you to pull your Bible out and read all of chapter 4 in John. Read the whole thing. But read it slowly. Because it's a beautiful story and an exchange between Jesus and this woman from Samaria. Now, we're told in the gospel that the Jews, and historically it's true, they had no patience, no love for Samaritans. They're kind of, you know, they're kind of like how Flynn Flanners feel about people in Channing, you know, they're kind of out there, you know. We kind of tolerate them, but we don't want to be, you know, talking to them all the time, you know, kind of a thing. They have to come into town to get things, but we like them to go back out amongst their own kind. So that's kind of how the Hebrews kind of looked at the Samaritans, you know. There wasn't a great hate, but there was just more, we just don't want to mix. And so here, the Samaritan woman comes up into Jesus' life, comes up to him, and, you know, it's kind of a puzzling place. It's a, it's a common area. People are coming to get water. But she's wondering why this Jewish man is speaking to her. Grossly inappropriate. People think I'm inappropriate talking to women as much as I do. Jesus, he lapped me in no time. He lapped me easily. And he embraces her with his presence. Now, he knows who she is. That's very clear in the gospel. She's not clear on who he is. And he reveals things to her about herself that he shouldn't be able to know. And she comes from a past that is perhaps questionable at best. She's made mistakes. And she's not looked at favorably by many people. What does Jesus do? He invites her to a better life. But he does it with a heart that embraces her where she is. Not once does he utter a word of judgment. Judgment doesn't even enter into the conversation at all. He offers to her a change in her life if she wants it. All it takes is a willingness to be better. A willingness to let the past go. A willingness to, to recognize that she's more than the sum of all her mistakes. And he doesn't even number her mistakes. He doesn't bring up her past at all. But he knows she's hurting. He knows she's ashamed. He knows she's, she feels alone. The whole conversation, and if you read the long version, it's there. The whole conversation is one in which he lets her know that she's still important, that she matters, even in her sin, that he and the Father are going to go to any length to make sure she doesn't give up on herself and a new life that can be hers. Now, I've read those books with scripture cover to cover over the years. Not once in all those pages do we hear about judgment. Not once does God ever reveal through the prophets, through Jesus, through anybody else, that judgment must be a thing of our life. We reserve that to God and to God alone. 
However, we are really good at judging. <laughs> it's like we excel at it. And we don't even really need to learn it. It just comes naturally to us. It's what we lead with. If not vocally, certainly within our heads and within our minds. We know exactly how we feel about people, even from the very beginning of when we meet them. We have an intuition, and we've been coached through what we hear and what we experience and what we see. And we're very comfortable in passing a judgment. Jesus makes it very clear in this interaction that judgment has no place. Rather, he does the opposite. He loves her into being a better woman, to being a better disciple, someone who's hungry, thirsting for God. And I think that's something we shouldn't miss in life, especially in our own interactions with others. Quite often, our reactions in life to circumstances, situations, even relationships and friendships are influenced by how we're feeling inside. If we do truly feel that we're not worth loving, why bother put the effort into healthy relationships? If we truly believe that I've screwed up astronomically, why bother seeking forgiveness? If I truly believe that my neighbor is beyond redemption, why bother trying to live together in an, a sense of understanding and a sense of mutual benefit? We become very easily biased as to who's worth our time and who isn't. And that's just part of our human nature. But we shouldn't grow so comfortable with it that we give up trying to find common ground. This season of Lent is, is about us discovering that even in our own poverty of sin, God still sees something of value in our lives. And we matter. And he only asks us to imitate that love in our own fragile way. But to do that, we can't do that alone. We do need to pray for God's strength and God's help. So I leave that with you today. If you get a chance, read that fourth chapter of John's Gospel. And if you can do it once, stop, and then read it again slowly. But place yourself as the woman at the well. Place yourself maybe with something that you have a hard time passing over. Getting in touch with whatever it is that you yourself can't let go of or even forgive yourself from. And allow that story to inspire even just a spark of hope. If you can come to a solid understanding that even in your life, you are redeemed by God's love, you will have a far more easier time being compassionate and understanding to those who have sinned against you. And it's just a start. We don't have to get it perfect. We don't have to do it 100%. But we do need to try. Allow the love of the mercy of God to do for you what no one else can. And then don't be shy to talk about it. We stand together.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Each time we gather for prayer, we gather not only for our needs, but for the needs of the world entrusted to our care. With confidence, we offer to our Father our prayer of petition today. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Murray, Father Paul, and all priests and lady, may God bless them and guide them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, herald of the good news of God's love for all creation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world's people who seek safe haven, and for our own country, strong in the tradition of welcoming strangers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's beloved son and daughters, who are in pain and in distress, and enslaved by fear or depression, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's people gathered here, invited to grow in caring and fidelity to our families and our Christian communities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all faithful departed, especially Harvey Chatlin, may they share in Christ's promise of resurrection by being raised up on the last day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray also today for, uh, especially for parents with sick children, uh, living with uncertainty and often times of fear. Let us pray for those who are sick as children, for their parents and loved ones. May God's strength inspire them and draw them closer together in hope. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious Father, you know our needs far better than we ourselves. Hear the prayers we offer before you and answer them according to your holy will. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We are now seated as we prepare our offering. The offertory hymn is, uh, is number 686 in the Catholic Book of Worship, too. Um, and just check here, make sure I've got this right. I think it is come back to me. Yes. back to me with all your heart don't let fear keep us apart trees do bend go straight and tall so must we to others call long have I waited for your coming home to me and living deeply our new lives. The wilderness will lead you to your heart where I will speak integrity and justice with tenderness 
you shall know. Long have I waited for your coming home to me and living deeply our new life. You shall sleep secure with peace. Faithfulness will be your joy. Long have I waited for your coming home to me and living deeply our new life. Pray, friends, that these our gifts be made acceptable to God, our loving and very generous Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Amen. Loving Lord, be pleased with these offerings and grant that what we, that we who pray to you for pardon for our own sin may take care each day to forgive our neighbor. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her. And so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled within her the fire of divine love. And so with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we too proclaim your glory as we pray. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we may love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we ask that you sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, by whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and handed it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on the same evening, he took the cup filled with wine, and confessing your mercy, he gave the cup to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me.
we stand as we proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Celebrating this memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have given to us, this sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly ask that you accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that divides us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Murray, our Bishop, and all who serve your people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Apostles, the Martyrs, Saint Anne, Saint John the Twenty-Third, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Each time we pray the Lord's Prayer, we pray not only for our will, but for God's will to become our will. So with courage we pray today. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord. From every evil, grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us in all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of Jesus Christ for the kingdom and glory are yours now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, and now say unto us, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Share that peace with one another. the Lamb of God, behold Jesus who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you at home, this is a time to pray for the grace of spiritual communion. We invite the Lord into your life to grant you every grace your life requires. The communion hymn is number 685 in the Catholic Book of Worship 2. I will sweep away your transgressions. I will sweep away your transgressions like a cloud and your sins will be to me like a mist dissolved so return to me I will heal you for I love you if you say to me Father I have blind if you say to me I can't see, I will be your light, I'll restore your sight, place all your darkness in me. I will sweep away your transgressions like a cloud. And your sins will be to me like a mist dissolved. So return to me, I will heal you, for I love you. If you say to me, I'm in prison, Lord, Imprisoned by my sins I'll come to you I will comfort you Let me wipe away your tears I will sweep away your transgressions Like a cloud and your sins will be to me like a mist dissolved. So return to me, I will heal you, for I love you.
Let us stand and conclude our prayer. Just as we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly ask, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to its true completion. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. 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 A couple of announcements. Next Saturday, we are having our annual St. Pat's Tea. So that'll take place within the parish hall in the afternoon. So we invite you to participate in that and to be generous with your presence and being able to celebrate a a little feast in the middle of the season of Lent. I was supposed to be away this week uh, for surgery, and before retreat started, my surgeon canceled the date. So I'm now not going until June the 2nd. So I'll be around for the next couple of weeks, even though I was supposed to be away. So keep praying for that, God willing, and uh, that's the earliest date I can get two weeks together uh, to be able to go. So hopefully, God willing, in June, that'll all pull together. May the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go live today for the glory of God. Thanks be to God. So our recessional hymn is When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, 489. Uh, please don't uh, mind. Don't please don't mind the uh, uh, board. Uh, it's it'll be the one right beside it. 489. When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, it was a typo, sort of. <laughs> When I survey the wondrous cross On which the Prince of Glory died My richest gain I count but loss And poor contempt on all my pride Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. All the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to his blood. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet, or thorns compose so rich a crown? Were the whole realm of nature mine That were a present far too small Love so amazing, O divine Demands my soul, my life, my own